Funda welcome you to the host and after that new program covering the last news both domestically and globally on Tech to Hours channel. Today's news will further the following noteworthy contents. Let's dive into it right away. Dear esteemed individuals, three days ago, two earthquakes with a magnitude of five or above occurred in Wailuong, on the border between Yunnan and Gizhou provinces, within the span of one hour. Although the two earthquakes had a maximum magnitude of only 5.7 on the Richter scale, they tragically resulted in 81 deaths, nearly 1,000 injuries, and more than 700,000 people affected. The extent of the damage caused by these events is truly astonishing. Yuang Vendan, who leads the non-governmental environmental organization Green Homeland in China, wrote that while we cannot change certain natural factors, some disasters caused by humans can be avoided. Most of the victims in this earthquake perished due to being crushed by rolling stones. Although rolling stones may appear to be a natural element, there are indeed artificial shadows lurking behind them. The geological environment of this region is delicate and combined with significant human activities, the local ecosystem has been fundamentally destroyed. Due to the devastation of vegetation, erosion of soil and water has become prevalent in many areas, especially in hilly and mountainous regions where the situation is particularly dire. With less soil covering the mountains and exposed rocks, the risk of landslides has increased. It is not difficult to imagine that if the vegetation were relatively healthy, the rolling stones would provide more time for villagers to seek refuge due to increased resistance. Furthermore, the Qinxia River and even the three rivers near the earthquake-stricken area are densely populated with cascading hydropower plants. Could it be that these hydropower plants have contributed to local terrain damage? consequently leading to numerous recent earthquakes in the area. This may necessitate thorough and honest geological research by experts. The large number of coal mines also exacerbates secondary disasters caused by earthquakes. Natural disasters themselves are not dreadful. What is truly frightening is our own artificial actions that weaken our ability to withstand these disasters. In an era of increasing natural disasters, if we continue to pursue immediate production without considering our own well-being and that of future generations, we are essentially digging our own grave. There is nothing wrong with utilizing resources for development, but the development models that harm the environment should have been eradicated long ago. Another landslide incident occurred in Yunnan, China, last Thursday. Preliminary statistics indicate that 19 individuals were buried, including 18 students attending makeup classes at a school. Sinhu News Agency reported that three people were missing and one person was seriously injured in the landslide that occurred at 8 a.m. local time when students were on their way to school. The landslide occurred in He Village, Longhai Town, Wailuang District, Chuthong City, within the mountainous region of Yan'an Province. According to images released by China Central Television, a significant portion of the densely forested mountain detached from the slope burying a local elementary school and the homes of three other families. Dear sir slash madam, the mass of the landslide has blocked an adjacent river, creating a reservoir that forced the evacuation of 800 residents downstream. Rescue teams are utilizing simple tools to search for survivors in the mud following the landslide. Approximately 2,000 individuals have been organized to clear the blocked river flow. A strong earthquake measuring 5.6 on the Richter scale also struck the area last month, resulting in the loss of 81 lives. According to local residents, continuous heavy rainfall in recent days is believed to be the cause of the landslide. This week marks China's Golden Week holiday, and schools are typically closed. However, students from Tranho Elementary School organized makeup classes for those who missed school during last month's earthquake. A local official named Yang told AFP that over 30 students were supposed to attend makeup classes yesterday, and 18 students arrived at school before classes began. Landslides frequently occur in the mountainous regions of China, especially during the rainy season. In May 2008, Sichuan province in southwestern China experienced the devastating Wenchuan earthquake, resulting in nearly 70,000 deaths and 18,000 missing persons. Hundreds of schools collapsed during the earthquake, sparking heated debates about the quality of school building construction. The issue remains sensitive, 
and Chinese internet users once again questioned why children are often the primary victims of natural disasters in China. One netizen on Weibo questioned, Why are local officials on vacation? Why was there no warning? Why did students return to school during the vacation? Another earthquake struck Sichuan before the floodwaters had receded. As residents hurriedly evacuated, they moved their belongings and important possessions, even taking a pet pig from their home as they fled. An intriguing photograph captured this moment, and social media users shared creative adaptations of the image, making little truck a sensation on the internet. A major flood occurred in Hangjiang town and Jitian city, Sichuan province, on Tuesday. Due to the flooding, villagers promptly evacuated, taking important belongings with them. Even pigs were pulled away by villagers to escape the disaster area. Several provinces in southern China have recently been severely affected by heavy rainfall, leading to serious flooding. According to foreign media reports, as of yesterday evening, at least 11 people have died, 15 are missing, and over 2.5 million people have been affected by the floods. According to a comprehensive report from foreign media sources, continuous heavy rainfall has affected Hubei, Jiangxi, Anhui, Guangxi, and other provinces in China for several days, resulting in severe natural disasters. In Hubei province, at least four people have died, 12 are missing, and over 880,000 people have been affected. In Jiangxi province, one person has died, one is missing, and over 880,000 people have been affected. In the Guangxi Autonomous Region, six people have died, two are missing, and around 570,000 residents have been affected. In Nanwei Province, over 170,000 people have been affected, and the area of crops affected by the disaster is over 200,000 hectares. Furthermore, Chinese authorities predict that in the next three days, heavy rain will continue in the northeastern part of Guangdong Province, the eastern part of Hubei Province, the northwestern part of Hunan Province, the southern part of Hainan Province, and the western part of Anhui province, potentially exacerbating the severity of the disaster. While Southeast Asia has been experiencing severe drought, there is now risk of serious flooding in northern China. According to foreign press reports, the upper and middle reaches of China's Yangtze River have been consistently affected by heavy rainfall recently, causing water levels to rise significantly, even surpassing the record levels of the 1998 Yangtze River floods. It is expected that the upper and middle reaches of the Yangtze River will also experience significant flooding this year. According to a comprehensive report from foreign media, the Yangtze River Conservancy Bureau of the Yangtze River Water Resources Commission has been monitoring a flow rate of about 12,000 cubic meters per second from the upper reaches of the Yangtze River at the Three Gorges Dam. This flow rate has consistently exceeded 10,000 cubic meters per second for eight consecutive days. Compared to the same period, the water volume entering the upper reaches of the Yangtze River is second only to that of 2008. It is projected that the upper and middle reaches of the Yangtze River may experience significant flooding this year. Data shows that during the summer flood season of the Yangtze River, the average flow rate at the Three Gorges Dam is below 10,000 cubic meters per second, with the highest value reaching around 17,000 cubic meters per second. Liu N. H. Chaman, Deputy Com Enter in Chief of the Yangtze River Defense Department has stated that the current water regime and flood control situation of the Yangtze River are serious. He has immediately raised the alert level and made preparations for flood prevention and response. Ladies and gentlemen, since June, many areas in China have been hit by heavy rainfall. According to the latest official data, 487 rivers across the country have experienced floods exceeding warning levels. Shaotai Ban, Secretary General of the National Flood Control and Drought Relief Headquarters, Deputy Minister of the Emergency Management Department and Deputy Minister of the Ministry of Water Resources, revealed this data during the regular press conference of the State Council on Flood Control and Disaster Relief, held annually. He also mentioned that 40 rivers have exceeded the guaranteed water level and 13 rivers have undergone the largest floods recorded since their establishment, mainly concentrated in Guangdong, Guangxi, Fujian, and Hunan. Since the beginning of this year, a total of 21.805 million people have been affected by flood-related disasters, resulting in a direct economic loss of 64.76 billion Chinese yuan, 
Among the recent flood events, the most concerning is the situation in Endex City, a district-level city under the jurisdiction of Qingyuan, Guangdong Province. A video circulating on the internet depicts the entire Endex town submerged in water, with four-story buildings inundated up to their roofs. Why does Endex have to suffer such distress? Wen Wailuo, a water conservation expert living in Germany, spoke to Voice of Hope reporters and explained that Tiquan and Endex are located alongside the Beijing River, one of the three major rivers in the Yangtze River Delta. There are two large reservoirs in the upper reaches of Tiquan and numerous smaller reservoirs in its tributaries. One of these reservoirs is the Phailaiha Reservoir, located downstream of Endex City and belonging to the Beijing River Basin Project. This reservoir has the capacity to enhance flood control in Guangzhou, the provincial capital, from a 100-year flood level to a 300-year flood level. The Phailaiha Reservoir is situated at the confluence of Thenbin City and Endex City. When floods occur, the Lakhangha Reservoir and Namtu Reservoir in the upper reaches of Tiquan begin to release water. Heavy rainfall and reservoir releases cause water levels in the middle reaches of the Beijing River to rise. The flood water level in Endex City reached 36.10 meters, exceeding the city's warning level of 26 meters. Consequently, Endex experienced flooding up to three or four stories high. Wang Wailu further explained that the residents of Endek hoped that the Phi Laiha Reservoir would quickly release water. However, the commanding office of flood defense for the three provinces in Guangdong province informed Endek residents that water cannot be released from the Phi Laiha Reservoir. This is because if they release water, it would flow downstream to Guangzhou, resulting in unimaginable consequences. He hopes that the people of Endek can understand this situation. The high water level is a natural process. Due to excessive water conservation efforts along the Beijing River, it depends entirely on the dams of the reservoirs. If the dams release water, floods can occur. As the floods arrived, the lower reaches of the Phi Gorge were blocked, leading to severe flooding. So why do the Lakhangha Water Conservation Project and the Namtu Reservoir in the upper reaches of Tiquan have to release water urgently during the flood season? Wang Wailuo clarified that the reservoirs themselves have safety issues. Therefore, when the flood season arrives each year, the primary task assigned to all 100,000 reservoirs is to ensure that the reservoirs being used can safely handle the floodwaters of that year. This is their first and foremost responsibility. They must safeguard their own lives, which is their top priority. As for irrigation and other activities, those come as secondary tasks. Among the 100,000 reservoirs in China, 80% are considered done safe, and the quality of these projects is a significant issue. People affected by natural disasters have repeatedly asked, why doesn't the government notify them in advance to move their belongings and evacuate safely before the floods arrive? Wang Wailuo believes there are two reasons for the lack of advanced flood release notifications. Firstly, China's reservoir management operates on a contractual system. The basic salary of reservoir staff comes from the state budget, while performance-based bonuses and wages depend on the operational efficiency of the reservoir. For instance, power generation, water sales, and aquaculture activities. The operators always want to retain water and avoid releasing it. However, during heavy rainfall and the risk of dam breakage, they have to release water urgently. Like in February of this year, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, and Hong Kong all face water shortages, and the water levels were very high. The water in the reservoirs is highly valuable. Additionally, he stated, if I were to announce that the flood would pass through people's houses and the flood inundated their homes, then people would demand compensation. In the case of a natural disaster, who would be responsible for compensation? No one would be compensated. It will always be attributed to a natural disaster, and no one will ever be held accountable for it. So there will be no compensation. Wang Wailuo believes that the capacity of the Beijing River Basin project by the Communist Party of China at the Phi Laiha Reservoir is only 5% of the annual water flow of the Beijing River. It doesn't mean that a reservoir can prevent floods. According to official statistics, approximately 400,000 people have been affected by the floods in Endex City, and over 30,000 people have been evacuated. The direct economic damage to agriculture, livestock, 
and aquaculture in Endek due to the floods amounts to 382 million Chinese yuan. Among them, 196,600 hectares of crops were affected, including 71,084.8 hectares of rice, resulting in an economic loss of 236 million Chinese yuan. This concludes our news report for today. Please leave any contributions in the comment section below. If you found this informative, please give us a like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for your attention and see you again. Thank you all for your attention and your share. Please leave your feedback in the comment section of this video so that we can timeline respond and address any question you may have. If you find it interesting, please like and click the bell icon below to not miss the last day video from our editorial team. Goodbye and see you again in the next new updates from 22 hours content.